Hello again, welcome back to The Potting Shed. Today I want to try and answer the question, should you mist your houseplants? Alrighty, so this is quite a complicated answer to this question, which is why I thought I would make a specific video about it, because in the past I've recommended that you mist your houseplants. And in the past I have also said that misting has limited benefits. So I've kind of contradicted myself. And if you look online out there with some authority websites, if you like, will often suggest misting houseplants. But I've done my own research on this and I've done a video a few years ago now. If you look back, you'll find a video I did with a bit of research on the actual effects of misting houseplants. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to explain to you why this does work and why this doesn't work. And if you hang around to the end, I'm going to give you some other suggestions which will be much, much better, including some ones that will cost you virtually nothing. So this is a mister. A lot of people will suggest you do that on the leaves of your houseplant, thus increasing the humidity. So let's just explain what happens when you mist a houseplant. So you're spraying the leaves, a fine mist of water eventually settles on the leaves and maybe the soil on the pot and maybe the general area around the pot. Now this very small amount of water will rather relatively quickly evaporate and as the water vapor evaporates the immediate humidity level around the houseplant will rise. Now I've tested this in a fairly basic unscientific manner I've used things like this, which are very cheap temperature monitors, digital temperature monitors. They will give you uh, a, a temperature and a humidity um, reading on here. They're not too bad. I've got a few of these and they all seem to correlate with each other. They're not wildly different. So I think whatever sort of cheap uh, tech is in here seems to be reasonably okay. Uh, it's measuring 73% humidity in the potting shed at the moment. It's a closed environment. There's lots of plants in here. There's a pond directly outside. I can believe that that's fairly high. In my house, I'd say the average is about 55, 56% humidity. Now, from my tests, when you spray a plant, and I'll put the, the meter right next to the, the plant after I've sprayed it, uh, as close as I can get to it. And what I normally see is the, uh, the humidity raises up by two, maybe three. It's cheap. Two, maybe three percent. I'll just put that over there. Uh, but what happens very quickly is that comes back down because it's such a thin layer of moisture that's on the leaves, it evaporates very quickly within I can't remember what it was off the top of my head. Within 15 minutes or so, uh, that water will evaporate and the humidity will come back down. So it does raise the humidity, yes. Uh, does it raise it for long? No. And does it raise it by much? No. So a couple of percentage points. So if you technically, yes, this will help the humidity of your plant. Is it worth it? Not really, not particularly, unless you are happy to spray your houseplants down every half an hour all the way through the day. It's unlikely that you'll get much results. Now, having said that, I have seen staff in garden centers with one of those big industrial sprayers that you pump up to get the pressure and then they spray all the plants down so that it's a lot more water it's really dripping off the leaves, getting a lot more water all over the plants. All of the plants are together, so thus raising the humidity much higher uh, because they're all together rather than just doing one plant. So that will make a difference. And that staff member is being paid to look after those plants. And I wouldn't be surprised if they go through two or three times a day, maybe even more, um, and absolutely spray all those plants down. They keep looking good. It keeps the dust off them and it will raise the humidity levels. And they're in a an environment where the floor is absolutely capable of taking water and moisture and it's not gonna affect the rest of the garden center. It's designed for it. There's a lot of water around. In your house, maybe you, you really don't have the facilities to be drenching down your, 
your houseplants every few hours. In that case, it's probably doing a reasonable amount of good. The humidity is raising higher and it's probably staying around for longer. There's a lot more water around. In these cases, when you give it a little, which to be honest is quite satisfying when you do that, uh, if you're doing it for your own benefit, then keep doing it. It's quite nice and it will make a bit of a difference. But long term, it's really going to raise the humidity levels to a point which is more or less insignificant. So now we've got that out of the way, what can we do about it? Well, there are other options. And here is the virtually free option, and that is to create a humidity, a humidity tray. I've also done a video about humidity trays in the past. Go back and look it up. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you'll see that video on there. It involves, I've just grabbed one. This is not a particularly good, uh, a good um, example, but it's one I literally grabbed on my way through my back porch. What we have is a piece of plastic food tray. I always try and reuse my plastic if I can. I've got loads kicking around here. Uh, just old food trays like this, maybe uh, tomatoes might come in, these sorts of things. Quite handy to make drip trays out of if you just want to protect some wood that you've got your, um, your house plants on or things like that. Really useful. There's no point going out and buying plastic trays when we're all throwing plastic trays away on a weekly and daily basis. So don't buy more plastic, reuse your plastic. Good tip. So that's what that is. Now I'll put some gravel in the bottom of it. It doesn't really matter what it is. You can put some small pebbles in here. And the idea, this is not a tray to water your plants with, okay? So the gravel is keeping your plant away from the water. So what we do, once the gravel or pebbles are in here, we put water in the bottom and then just stop short of the level of the gravel. So the water's in there, but it's not on the surface, if you see what I mean. So when you put your plant on there for illustrative purposes. Once the pot sits on here, there's going to be water all the way around the pot just under the surface. So it's not watering it because you want to you want to control the watering of your plants. You don't want to be constantly taking this water up into the into the pot. You should water your plant separately. And if you water it on here that's fine because it will just top up the humidity tray. But the idea is there will be water sat in here and it will and the, the plant will keep it away from taking it up into the into the pot. And what that will do is there's a lot more water. So it will evaporate and it will raise the humidity levels. Again, only a small amount, maybe four or five percent, but there will be a high humidity level around your pot for longer. This will probably last one or two days before all that water has evaporated and as it does it's creating humidity. So this is a longer solution to create more humidity for a longer period of time. Top it up a few times a week with water and then you'll have more humidity around your house, um, around your house plants, at which are in your house, I suppose. <laughs> um, the other thing you can do, I'll put this down. The other thing you can do is keep your plants together. As you can see in the potting shed here, it's a higher humidity. I can definitely tell I'm a little bit warm. It's summer. <laughs> it's one of the three days of summer we have here in the UK and it's rather warm today. Um, so it's a more humid environment. And my point, which I almost lost, was if you keep your plants together, the moisture in each of the plants will add up to a higher humidity level. So that will help if you bunch them together. If you make a nice display, tiered uh, plants all in an area together, then each of them together will add up to more humidity and you will get higher humidity levels in that area as well. So that's two virtually free or free ways of raising the humidity around your plants. I haven't really said why. Well, the reason why we prefer higher humidity levels Around here in Europe, in the UK, um, we have cold winters. So we have central heating for uh, the autumn and winter and early spring to heat the houses. And that dries out the air. So the air around our houses is not conducive of houseplants. You'll often get browning of the leaves because of the lower humidity levels. They get a bit crispy and then some of the leaves may even die off. So 
that's because these plants are mainly tropical and subtropical species. They come from places like South Africa, they come from Brazil, they came, come from the rainforest. They're naturally uh, humid loving plants, that's their natural environment. And if we then put them in a dry house with heating on in the winter, it's gonna dry out the plant, it's not a natural place for them to be. So that's why we like to try and increase the humidity, which will have more optimum conditions for the houseplants to grow and thrive in. They'll put up with it. A lot of houseplants are quite tolerant and will put up with the lower uh, humidity levels, but they might not thrive. And that's what we will aim to achieve is the best possible conditions for houseplants. If you're really into them and you want to create the best environment, then slight, slightly higher humidity levels are what we're trying to aim for. So that's the why, and we've suggested two uh, free or more or less free ways that we can do that a little bit. Now, the other way uh, that will make a big difference is a humidifier. I don't want, I don't have one here, um, but I'll stick a picture of one here. And this, a humidifier is a very simple device. It holds a reservoir of water and that water is, uh, is created into steam uh, via a little piezo device, a uh, little steam maker within the, the device, if you like, the machine. Um, it isn't boiled, so it's not heated, so it doesn't use a huge amount of um, energy. It's pretty efficient. You can set it as a little digital timer. You can set it how long you want it to go for, uh, for how long and what times and things like that. You can plug it in next to your house plants and that will create a much, much higher humidity level. So you can pretty much set it to any humidity level you want. You can have tropical rainforest levels of humidity if you want to have your walls dripping with moisture, that's fair enough. But um, no, you can set it and you can have it come on and that will keep the higher levels of humidity topped up in your living environment or around wherever your house plants are. Now, what are the drawbacks to a humidifier? Firstly, they're expensive, they cost money. Uh, secondly, they're unsightly, you know, they're about this size, a lot of them. You can get little ones, but they only produce small amounts of um, water vapor and you have to top them up regularly. The bigger ones like this have bigger reservoirs. You might have to top it up with water every two, three days, maybe a week, depending on uh, how long you have it on for and how big the reservoir is. So it costs more money. Um, they're a little bit unsightly to have in your living environment if you worry about that sort of thing. And also, for me, I have my house plants spread all around my house in almost every room of my house. Let me think. Every room of my house has a house plant, including the bathroom, including the downstairs toilet, um, also has uh, house plants in it, and my back porch, my front porch. I don't need to list all the rooms in my house, but they all have house plants in. So it's not convenient to have a humidifier in every room. That would be very expensive and it just would be even more unsightly. So it's not always the most practical thing, but that is an option for you. If you have a really prized house plant that absolutely must have high levels of humidity, that will get it done. If you buy that, you could have buy a small one just for one plant, set it next to it, Aim the, aim the humidity vapor at the plant, you're gonna be absolutely fine. So it is an option and it's probably the most effective option. Um, the area of the house plant will be humidified for as long as that, on, that is on and probably stays that way for a little while afterwards as well. So that is the getting the job done method. Alrighty, I think that pretty much wraps it up. Thank you very much for watching. Please give it a thumbs up if you found it useful or helpful subscribe if you're new around here and I will catch you very soon on another video. Bye for now.